Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Uh, today I start my lectures about the wisdoms of wisdom. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mazen, for kind invitation. Uh, sorry for being late. Uh, this is wisdoms of wisdom. This is uh, before I start. I declare I don't have any conflict of interest in these lectures, and I take the consent for photography for patients. Uh, I I wish you hear the sound. Uh, now I start the job. Uh, this is my brief resume. Uh, what's mean of impacted tools? Uh, we define its tooth fail to interrupt in a normal positions in the dental arch. We have frequent type different of impaction can be mandibular uh, third, maxillary third, up to upper central incisors. Uh, today I like to discuss the dilemma whether to remove or to keep. This is the most important things. Do you think wisdom tooth is an asset or a liability? This uh, issue, either it's uh, the liability or is an asset. Let's discuss the development of wisdom start at the age of seven. Then it will go at the age of 12 and 14 as a starting of crown formations. Then it have format of the root to uh, the age of 16. And in that age uh, removal, it can be indicated and can be easy in this age. Uh, root complete, uh, root complete, complete occurring maximum in the age of 18 and maybe it can be delayed till 25 eruption maybe at age of 20 and majority of our case by age of 24 95 of the case is erupted a very limited number is erupted in the 30 things uh, the key of affect the risk its benefit via benefit via risk ratio this is the most important things we have to evaluate the benefits Evaluate the risk of retention, whether the risk of removal, and this is affecting our decision in removal. The benefits, it's mean uh, the benefit of uh, benefit of removal via the risk of removal. This is one of the important things. We have to magnitude our procedure, whether it's major or minor, whether I do it in my office or I, um, uh, I should take the patient to the hospital. Is it permanent deformity? Does it affect the daily routine and the patient has a social lag or take something like this? How sick is the patient? One of the important things, the airway most important, the mental status, whether the patient can sign the consent, trismus effect on the vital structure, whether there are an infection and onset of infection. This is affecting my treatment plan either in my office or for GP that I refer to oral surgeons or hospitals. The probability, the most overlooked frequently, uh, if you have a problem with the treatment. The benefits are erupted third more or more or less subjected to disease. This is one of important issue. Are erupted third more or are more or less, less beneficial or no? Wisdom as an asset, something good. Eruption into occlusion should be uh, the only, the soul of usefulness. The benefit of thirds, it can be act as a functional occlusion. What's mean? It's not static functional occlusion. It's share in article in food, in feeding. Or stomach repositioning, especially if you have missing second uh, molar. And the transplantations. Uh, for me, I do some cases of transplantations and I have a liquid survival rate up to 75% from my cases. Wisdom as a liability, something bad. Failure of eruption should not be the sole criterion for removal. For example, if you have old lady came to your office in 50s or something like this and she had wisdom, I will not going to remove it. A soft tissue, it can be a problem. Why? Because it's favorable for bacteria because it's hot, dry and humid. Predontal compromising, especially the second motor, it can be get uh, what we call these infra bony pockets which later on uh, uh, get a permanent problem. Bone loss distal to the second molar. Uh, and this is evidence-based and the alveolar crest healing is improved after wisdom removal for these cases. Uh, we have to measure before we start this case for medical legal liability, we have to measure the bone height. Like these cases, it's very uh, predontal compromising, the role of pathogens and bacteria retention is very important to understand. 
like this. It's very favorable for bacteria. And if it left, it can be led, lead to lost again for second models, like these cases. And how does we treat a second missed models? It can be treated by cantilever abutments, by implants, by partial dentures. Uh, some operators, they do uh, fixed partial dentures. I don't advocate. The missing second molar, it has a dilemma. It's a dilemma of management for these cases, uh, whether to make a bridge, whether to extract, a lot of things. Third molar care is also, it's a big, very big dilemma, whether you will do for root canal treatments, we'll do a filling. Okay, I think this is depend mainly on your experience and also upon the patient preference. Uh, for me, if I have a patient young age, even with uh, KRS ditched to the bulb, I prefer to remove the wisdoms like these cases. This is a second molar KRS also. It's arising also from the push of the wisdoms and also it's very unfavorable for cleaning. In these cases, if you like to go, I prefer to go for access opening in the same time and I remove the wisdom in the same go. Why? Because if I, if you remove the wisdom and ask the patient to come later on, maybe from uh, immunocompromised, the patient came with pain. You cannot differentiate between the bulbal pain and the pain from the wisdom. Like these cases. Infection. Infection uh, is one of the important things that can derive my procedure from elective procedure. I do it in uh, not in a hassle and I take appointment into an urgent or even an emergency as it compromising a lot, a lot of things. This is infections. We have different types of infections starting from simple dental caries up to systematic infections that can arising from impacted wisdoms. This is pericoronitis, one of the most common cause of therapeutic third molar removal. This is periconitis, it means the collection of these tissues around the crown and it's related to crown of unerupted tooth. Usually it's, uh, it's very difficult for cleaning. Uh, I prefer to do these cases using a diode laser. It providing me with a safe and bloodless cleaning. And also it gives sterilization to the tissues by this mean using of uh, low level diet uh, sorry using of diet lasers followed by biostimulations we clean it but i don't do a perchectomy unless i am sure that tooth has a place to erupt i don't like to go for a perchectomy and later i go for surgical removal of wisdoms other problem is resorptions resorptions for the other for the neighboring or super eruptions, especially if you remove the lower summit uh, on encroaching, it's considered assisting encroaching the crown of the lower wisdoms, like this case. Super is like this vintage cyst, or it can be large, even can cause mandibular fractures. We have different types of cysts. It can be arising in this area. So this is can be uh, very difficult during my decision. Either I remove or I retention. But in this case, it's uh, usually it's preferred to remove the cyst under GA and taking uh, the precaution to avoid mandibular fracture later on, like this case. Or it can be encroaching at tumors like these amyloplastomas. Tumors that can be benign or malignant. Most common in this area is amyloplastomas. Or risk of fracture, like in this case, see this case. Immediate pre uh, extraction, there are a very thin mandible, it's called pipe stem. So, if you're not able to remove this, it's advised to wait. This is immediate post extractions. Three days.
and it can be obvious fracture like this case. In this case, after a removal, I'm using a plate to fix this fracture via intraoral approach. Also, it can be removed for orthodontic. There are conventions either to remove or to keep. Uh, any alternative for removal? Yes, restoration, periodontal therapy, operculectomy, removal of another teeth, or no treatments for the patient. Uh, some is preferring cornectomy, removing the crown and keeping the roots, especially in difficult cases, like was stated later on. Time of removal. When time, the best time for prophylactic removal is from age to 15 to 18. Why? Because uh, there are wide periodontal space, the bone is slightly soft, usually there are no problem in health with the patient, less risk for It's very important in some cases, it can arise a severe problem to our patients. Like this cartoon, this is illustrating why the aim of prophylactic removal of the wisdoms. See? Like this area. It can pushing and cause resorption to the tooth. I prefer to make sedation to my patients before I go for this surgical removal. Very important things to get a safe removal without exerting excess pressure. Excess pressure will not cause fracture, but it may cause severe pain later on in the post-operative phase. Uh, we have to evaluate the wisdom before we're going for removal. It can be this to angular, mesio angular, a lot of positions. I like to implement this Winters line, which is go back to the George Winters from UK. He make two lines, the white line with occluded of uh, upper molars and the other with cemento enamel junctions. And then we draw a red line from the cemento enamel junction on the wisdoms and the blue, the yellow line. If this line is more than five, it's indicating the surgery will be very difficult or in some time require GTA. If it's less than five millimeters, that's requiring, that's stating that your surgery become slightly easy. Uh, recently, we are using combeam seat scan and it's considered a standard of care to evaluating our wisdoms. We can use combeam seat scan to evaluate the relation of the tooth to the neurovascular bundle and also of enabling us to see the root morphology and to avoid any later on problems with the patients. Let's see this video. In this patient with the resiliency, we can use the resiliency of bone to retrieve the wisdom very easily. This one of indication of prophylactic removal. Everything is feel fine when the patient is young. You can remove it very fast without exerting excess pressure to this. Also, we can use a comb beam seat scan. This video is prepared with my friend, Dr. Amr Tohami. How we can see exact the position of neurovascular bundle. to avoid any later on problem. Let's start with the surgery. Surgery, I like adequate access. So uh, during wisdom removal, uh, you have to uh, a prepared assistant working with you uh, to adequate access and uh, proper suction, a keyhole. Incision must be sharp blade. So uh, please open the blade before you work. You have to be firm with continuous stroke. Take care from the vital st structures, perpendicular to enabling a proper healing. We fix the blade like this. We use size 15. 
you fix it till you hear a trick, it means it's in. This is the ideal way of incisions. If you do a proper incision, you will get a proper healing later on. This is the ideal way of cutting the tissues. You go to till the periosteum till you hear the bone scratching. That's mean you are making a mucobriosteal flap and avoid the tethering of the flap. We use size 15 for incision and size 11 for suture removal. This is mucobriosteal flap. You have to take care for the healing. So you have to get the base wider than the apex. You have to take care from the vital structures. So we prefer to make a apex. The wide, the base, it's wider than the apex, so provide a proper nourishment and proper blood supply. I don't like to make incision in the papilla. And you have to take care from the blood supply and vital structure, like this type of incisions. Incision can be a full thickness flap, like this case. In full thickness flap, you just go scrabbing till you hear the bone sound, like this case. And then you will go to the periosteal elevator to make a proper reflection for the tissues. In partial thickness, my secret, I prefer uh, to, uh, to make incision, to make injection of saline before I go. This is enabling me of doing hydrodissection. So I make my incision just mucosal and don't make any injury for the periosteum. This is done usually for the periodontal surgery or we do it if you have impacted canine. If you do improper flap, you will get improper nourishment and then tethering of the flap and proper later on very bad healing to your work. This is the incisions and this is mucobriosa flap. And how we can remove it. See, this is full thickness mucobriosa flap. In this case, we're drilling implants with the same concept. In this we do a, muco, a full thickness mucobriosal flap and I put bone graft and membrane. Usually I prefer to do this with dental implants cases. Uh, after I finish my surgery, I like to close it. Why? To get it a healing by primary intention, not by secondary intention. Usually I use uh, resorbable sutures. Uh, it gets me very safe healing. I prefer to use Vicryl 4 to 4 O. So no need for comfort suture removal. Usually we use a, a bifilament or multifilaments. Okay. Usually uh, we we don't like to suture which make dying or suture like silk. I don't prefer to do it. I use cutting needles. This is needle holder, uh, tissue forceps and scissor. This is a way to grasp needle holder. You have to try it before you use it. In the patient, especially if you have a new instruments, you have to know how to close it and without doing any problem. This is very important things. Uh, we use the needle holder for aversion of it. And then I go, I prefer not to make my suture as a one go, step by step. And I prefer to start from the fixed to the mobile thickness. So for the wisdoms, I start from the, from the inside to outside. This one of the important things during it. Uh, usually during my sutures, I, I prefer either to make a key sutures or to make a root of half to divide the wound into halves. This is uh, provide. This is preventing me from improper healing. How to remove the sutures? And some sutures you need to remove it if you use a proline or silk. Very rarely. This is interrupted sutures. This is mattress sutures. It's enabling a watertight closures. Usually we do this when I have elective surgery, when I guarantee there are no infections.
This is continuous, it can be locked or non-locked. This is how we can do the sutures. Usually I rotate my hand Then I grasp the distal end And then I make my sutures This is the sutures This is a way of tight closures. I use a toothed forceps. Using toothed forceps, you can grasp the needle. And you can make a proper suturing. For the wound. During these sutures, I prefer not to go more, uh, less, uh, no, don't go more deep in the lingual side. Just my limits is uh, five millimeters. Why? To avoid any mechanical injury for the lingual nerve. This is it's called mattress. This is enabling a very tight closures. It's called horizontal mattress. It, we have two types, either horizontal or vertical. And then we tight our sutures. See the way of tightening the sutures. In this type, we make a one go sutures like this case this is continuous sutures mattress either vertical or horizontal non-resolvable suture vicral uh, 7 o in if you like to make a predontal surgery to save the papilla let's start the case this is incision and after the incision we make in this section then we make a start to make a separation of the tooth this is the way to remove the suture this is very important you have to grasp to cut in the tissue level. Why? To avoid entering the suturing material from the dirty oral cavity inside the wound. This is very important. See, to avoid any problem later on. And doing the implant, the dental impaction with a luxury and doing the proper healing, this is enabling you to get a class A service to our patients. This is different types of the flap. For me, I prefer to do these types from the flaps. It's very safe to my patients. Uh, in some cases, and some operators prefer to include the seven with them, or uh, some operator prefer to do this without doing any uh, releasing incision. I don't like to do it. Why? It's providing my patient with later on decision. Let's see this case. This is our incision. And after we're making a proper dissection and let's see this video this video to expose the impacted wisdom and after you expose it you make a gathering and the bone And then you remove it step by step and then you go for sutures of the wound starting with the key suture in the distal of the seven then you go for the other sutures if you have impacted wisdom like this we have to go for i prefer to start with round bare just exposure then you go to expose the crown 
and when you got a point of application usually it's cemento enamel junctions and a preostal elevator is designed to touch the roots not designed to touch the crown and this is after closure with simple sutures this flap and this is removal of the bone making removal of the crown separation of the crown you have to take care not to, to avoid the injury the uh, roots not to uh, injury the neurovascular, neurovascular junctions then separating part by part you retrieve the crown first and then, then you go for the root usually using a crossbar just to engage in the periodontal not to exerting a pressure on this area let's see this video under microscope this is how we can remove the undercut I use a 13 blade to remove the excess periodontal tissue and then we can safely remove it without later on problems let's see this wisdom case and this after designing a flap another design the concept is easy just make the flap and after you make a flap you will go for bone removal and then we will make our plan in this case we make separation of the tooth we cannot making this unless we take we make sure there are the, the roots is not fused or separated then i start with to putting my elevator in the middle not between the seven on the tooth this is enabling me of highly safety during my work then i retrieve usually This is another technique, very old British technique. I use it, it's called lingual splitting technique. It's used with osteotomy. You have to take care, avoid to injury, anything related to the conduct. But this is very safe and provide a very fast removal of the wisdom. It's done by some uh, surgeons in the world. It's not done too much, it's still, it's very old. Surgical procedures, it can be divided into stage. Incisions, like we stated, usually it's mucobriostal flap, like this case, incision, and then we will go for bone removal, uh, then we go for application of the elevator, elevator as we stated before, it's applied in the roots, not for the crowns, and then we booked our sutures, like this horizontal case, it's removed like this, going with round burr, then you can retrieve it easily. Put your first suture, it's called, it's called key sutures. This is vertical case, opening an incision, exposed, and then you go for removal. Usually we prefer to remove the bone from the buccal side more, more. Regarding to the upper, upper one of the most important things the bone is usually it's very uh, soft comparing with the lower just you get a point from the crown it's safe to inserting your crown your elevator but please when you when you remove an upper wisdom you have to put your left hand and support the tuberosity this is preventing you from a lot of complications see this case it's a deep case like this impacted wisdom inside the sinus this is during the surgery and this is video show us how we can do the surgery this video show us how we can do the surgery and how we can do safe removal from inside the maxillary sinus this patient take a general anesthesia endotracheal uh, nasotracheal tube
This is after removal. Okay. At last, very important before to doing any surgery, you have to tell the patient this is surgery. And I like to tell usually my patient about what my post-operative instructions. I focus on this post-operative instruction, what to expect, what to do, what to avoid to my patient. And I tell the patient regarding to the procedure step, this enabling you a very safe way and the type of anesthesia. And I inform my patient there are anamnes in the lower loop. Maybe he bite his own lip, so you have to take care. This is one of the very important things. So please take care from this to avoid any lip injury after doing the surgery. And why should I remove it? So I usually, and if you have, uh, and also you have to notify the relative. I, um, I notify the patient not to eat a hot beverage. It's not advised. And not to smoke or drink alcohols for one or two days after the surgery. And also I tell the patient about something I call these red flags. What's mean red flag? Something if the patient notes he should come to my office immediately. If he have uncontrolled bleeding, what's mean of uncontrolled bleeding? Uncontrolled bleeding, that's the bleeding will not stop with, with back. So the patient can call me or call my service or I notify him with local hospital in the area. And this is the way of putting back for the patient. Usually I prefer, and I tell my patient not to rinse. You have to take care during the sleep. This is important things I do. I tell my patient about the chance for edema and swallowing. And you, have, you can give the patient, and there are something that's called social lag. The patient cannot go to the certain events or have to make a hot fermentations a cold fermentation for the first day and then hot fermentation in the second day. This edema can obliterate the nasolabial fold. And the importance of the brushing and when the patient can go back for the brushing. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Mazin, for your kind invitation. This is my personal contact. Uh, see you, inshallah, in the next lectures.